Okay, uh, we were discussing the assumption made by the consumer theory and we already discussed many of them such as we discussed the uh, completeness, we discussed the reflexiveness, we discussed the transitivity and continuity. Uh, before we discuss further assumptions made by the consumer theory, it is mandatory to discuss the utility function first. The utility function is important because uh, utility function is a convenient way to uh, summarize the consumer behavior. So let's start the consumer behavior uh, by using the tools of utility function. The utility function can be reported as. So mathematically we can uh, present the utility function this way. This is the utility function, this is the consumption set and it is mapping R, right? So it, what is X? X shows the all possible consumption bundles, right? And it will be converted into some real number. The, what is this real number? This is the utility derived from the uh, consumption a particular bundle. And this arrow shows the functional relationship between the consumption bundle and the utility derived from it. So it means that the consumption shift uh, is mapping some real value, right? Uh, if there are two bundles, for example, X and Y, right? And suppose X is preferred to Y, then the utility function can be reported as, look at it, something like this. So if X is strictly preferred to Y, then utility derived from X will be greater than utility derived from, from Y. So this X and Y, they belong to the consumption set and the utility which is derived is represented by R. R is some level of utility. In other words, this X belongs to the uh, consumption set, right? And this Y also belongs to the consumption set. And this utility of X and utility of Y are reported in terms of R. So these utility belong to R and this consumption set belongs to the consumer, the consumption set. Moreover, it should be uh, borne in mind that utility function is a monotonic function. This monotonicity would either be weak monotonicity or it will be strong monotonicity. To understand this, let us uh, report this phenomena mathematically. So let utility of X represent some preferences something like this. For example, if there are two same bundles X and Y and suppose X is at least as preferable as Y then mathematically we can report this phenomena as okay if x is at least is preferable as y then function of utility of x would be at least as much function of utility of y this is a transformation of the of the function right so this is a monotonic function utility of x would be greater than utility of y if x is at least as preferred to y. Conditional on utility of x is greater than utility of y. So this is what this is function depends upon the utility of x. Function depends upon the utility of y. So if the utility of x is greater than the utility of y, then this is a monotonic function, right? This is a transformation of the utility function in which the utility of x is greater than the utility of y. And this discussion gives rise to uh, two assumptions of monotonicity. One is weak monotonicity and the second is strong monotonicity. And weak and strong monotonicity can be reported as, look at it. Now, what is weak monotonicity? If x is at least as much as y, these are two consumption bundles which belongs to the consumption set. And here you can see the same thing in the strong monotonicity as well. If X is at least as much as Y, these are two bundles and these are also two bundles which belong to the consumption set. Now look at it. Here the equality signs and inequality signs holds the same thing holds here, right? But what is the difference between the two? Here the consumer is poor to differentiate between Y and X, though he knows that X is a little bit 
better than or greater than y and here he has he has more clear that x is greater than y right so this means that the consumer is poor to depreciate to choose between x and y though he knows that x is at least as preferable as y but here the consumer has strong decision making power and he can differentiate between x and y that's why there is no guarantee whether x is equal to y in this case but here it is guaranteed that x is not equal to y so it means that the consumer has more, more psychological power to differentiate between x bundle and y bundle so here the preferences for x is greater than the preferences for y that's why he uh, uh, he, uh, he he perceives that x is at least much as y but here the uh, the equality sign has less meaning somehow no meaning and you can say that x somehow x is greater than y because the equality x is not equal to y so here the consumer is clear that x is greater than y so that's why x would strictly be preferred to y and here x would be at least be as much preferred as y okay what do i mean by local non situation to understand local non situation let us uh, let us take certain things let us assume that there are two bundles x and y in the consumption set so there are two bundles one is x and the other is y and both belongs to the consumption set now assume a value of uh, epsilon which is just greater than 0 assume this thing so what do what does this mean it means that it doesn't mean the epsilon is uh, something like this so by epsilon taking uh, greater than 0 does that mean the epsilon is a great value like 7 7 is also greater than 0 when we talk talk about epsilon is greater than 0 it simply means that it is mathematically greater than 0 though in practical it can be equal to 0 but when we are talking about this thing epsilon is greater than 0 uh, roughly speaking epsilon can be something like 0.0000001 like this right now x is the same, x, x belong to the consumption set and y also belongs to the consumption set what is the difference between these two the difference between these two so the difference between these two consumption bundle is x minus y absolute now the first question is why do we take in at an absolute we take in absolute because if x is greater than y the value will be positive but if y is greater than x then the value will be negative and both these are consumption bundles consumption can be equal to 0 but it cannot be negative that's why we are taking its value in absolute form right and the difference is so minimal it is less than it is less than this value as well it is less than epsilon now imagine it it is less than epsilon right now when it is less than epsilon so you can imagine imagine how the difference between x and y as and other thing we conclude here is y is greater than x the reason is we took it in epsilon uh, in absolute form right so it means that the value comes up uh, with negative sign that's why we took it in absolute form so it means that y is preferable to x so the difference though the difference between x and y is less than this value right less than this value but still by the rationality assumption we say that the consumer would prefer y to x right the reason is y is greater why is what is the guarantee that y is greater because we took it in absolute form application the economic application of this is it rules out a thick and difference curve right it so how can we uh, we we can draw a we we can sketch a consumption curve and then we can explain the same phenomena here in here 
now look at this uh, difference curve you can see this is x bundle and this is the y bundle and you can see some positive distance between x and y right so it means that if you are doing uh, an optimization via this a uh, thick and difference curve there still be some room for optimization right so we have to minimize the distance between the uh, this consumption x bundle and this y bundle so as to uh, arrive at strict optimization right so the difference between these two dots is actually epsilon still this is too much because we can see that but in mathematics this is a small a is look at this value right so that's why if you uh, uh, if this is the situation still y shows some higher level of consumption and x shows some le low level of consumption that's why you in this situation you have to prefer uh, y over y over x right you have to prefer y over x so this is this, this is some this is something local non situation okay uh, next assumption is convexity right so what do we mean by the convexity um, c if there are three bundles uh, x y and z and all of things belong to the consumption set right so if x is such that it is at least as much preferable as z and y is also such that it is at least as preferable as z then the linear combination of these two bundles x and y will also be at least much as preferable to z so what is this thing this is the average the average value of x and y and it is the linear combination so it means that we can create an infinite combination of x and y right and it will be at least as preferable to z and this is his weak convexity because you can see that you can see equality sign here right and strict convexity is if x is not equal to y and z x is not neither equal to y nor z right and all of them belongs to uh, the consumption set x and again if x is at least as preferable as z and y is at least as preferable as z then the linear combination of these two x and y right would be strictly preferred to z convexity again these are infinite combination of x and y but note that x is neither equal to y nor equal to z so that's why a linear combination would also be uh, or it would strictly be preferred to z this is this is called uh, strict convexity so these are different assumptions made by the uh, consumer behavior uh, so let us proceed